Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Chasse bringing you a new video on Duel Links and today is going to be a noob's guide to Spellbox. I've been using Spellbox for the last like few weeks, non-stop. I've been loving the deck and yeah, I thought I would show you guys that are not too familiar with the deck combos and everything that you can pull off of the deck because people keep asking me in my Discord and in other places, is it worth going for Spellbox um, and basically should I spend my gems on getting a Spellbox deck? And I... <laughs> thing is, I'm biased with this question because I say yes, because I absolutely love Spellbox. It's such a strong archetype in the game, and Mr. Decade himself has said if a Spellbox player goes first and opens up strong with a Grass is Greener and stuff like that, it's basically impossible to beat him. It's such a strong deck and has so many win cons, and the combos are insane. So this... wait, let me just remove that. And both these. Throw in two of these. And two of these. Here we go. This is a basic loadout for a 30 card spellbook deck. Obviously, you have to run your three spellbooks of prophecy. It's the main guy. Um, if you hear people saying um, spell the blue guy, this is the blue guy that people are on about within spellbooks. Um, this prophecy destroyer. He is such an amazing card because if, as soon as you play Grass is Green End, he goes to the graveyard. You can banish three spellbooks from your graveyard special summon it, but sometimes it's a bad play to make because obviously fate also banishes spellbooks and you need spellbooks in your grave to activate it. Same with the fool and reaper because when reaper is normal summoned or special summoned, you can activate this depending on how many spellbooks you have. If you have three or more, it gains 600 sack. Four or more, add one spellbook from your deck to your hand. Five or more, special summon one level five or higher dark spellcaster monster, any monster whatsoever. Very, very powerful card. And the Fool is the main engine of the deck along with Blue Boy. Because what Fool does is once per turn you can send one Spellbook card from your deck to your graveyard during your end phase um, that yet yeah, activated this effect. You can tribute this card, Special Summon 1, 5 or higher Dark Spellcaster from your deck. You must have 5 or more Spellbooks in your graveyard to activate this effect. So this can literally pull out, let me just go to Spellcaster's Dark, level 5 or higher. Um, Spellcaster, where are you? There you are. Boom. It can pull out. I didn't click dark, my bad. There we are. Yeah, you might have seen people run it with Demok. Demok's a great tech in because um, of Fool. You can also run, you saw that I had this guy in. He's super good because you can discard one spell from your hands to target one card on the field, destroy it. So you're getting spell box to the graveyard that way and removing cards from the field. There's so many different options that you can actually run. I've seen people even using this. There's so, so much stuff that, that you can actually do with the deck. In regards to Fool or the Prophecy, the main thing that you want to know is you do have to have three Spellbooks of Secret to make the engine work to the best of its um, capability. It's like the strongest Spellbook because it's basically the main one where you're just like, I play this, I can grab a Spellbook of any kind from my deck to my hand. It also grabs um, Blue Boy from the deck to your hand if you need to grab the monster. Um, obviously, this is the card everyone fears the most, and that's the sp um, Spellbook of Fate. Banish up to three Spellbooks from your graveyard to activate one of these effects. First, return one set spell on the field to the hand. Sometimes you'll use that, but you're not going to use it that often. Second, change one monster on the field to face on defense position or face up attack position. That works for your opponent's monsters as well, so you can change their monsters to face up, face down, um, and you can do it to yourself. What I've noticed is sometimes it is pretty good to do it on your own blue boy because when they attack into the blue boy and it gets destroyed, it flips and you can activate its effects again. Um, that's a combo that you can pull off with the Spellbook archetype. And the third effect is what people use the most, which is banish one card your opponent controls. It doesn't have to be a face up, face down spell or trap or monster. It just banishes one card by tributing three. Um, something that you have to remember is your graveyard is your strongest resource with Spellbox. So don't go crazy banishing everything it's just to remove everything because then you're going to be screwed if your opponent actually has a play and you don't manage to OTK your opponent. People frown upon Spellbox in a way because they don't know how they work properly and then obviously they see that Bully Boy is the main monster in the deck with 500 attack, 400 defense. And that puts them off because they think he's the strongest monster in the deck, he basically does nothing. But you will be relying on your Destroyer and your Reaper the most. And obviously if you take in a few of the Dark level 5 or highers, you're going to be relying on them late game. 
to go in, do the damage, and win you the game. Early game, best start in hand, obviously opening up with Grassy Screener, a Blue Boy is always good, or Fool. Um, Fate is okay, but if you open up with Secrets, you're set basically. Um, some people also like wonder what other spellbooks is good to run. Master is like the best one. You always want to run three because what you uh, the main combo that people do they play Spellboy to grab secrets, they play secrets to grab Master, and then they activate Master targeting secrets in the graveyard so you can get secrets effect off twice. And just doing that combo, you ha you'll have two gravekeepers, not gravekeepers. You'll have two spellbox in the graveyard to pop off. So what I'm going to do is just throw in one Dark Magician of Chaos into the deck. You can run 20, people do like running 20, but if you want to run this deck to its optimal, like, optimal plays, you want to run 30. I'll jump in some duels right now, show you some combos with the deck. Even if I lose the duels, it's just, I'm just here to like show you some of the plays that you can make. Because I know I do have quite a lot of people who watch my videos who know of archetypes in the game, they know a deck strong, but they don't know how to execute the combos and strategies and do all that kind of crazy stuff. So I gave a rundown of most of the spellbook cards in the deck, and now I want to show you guys some of the combos you can actually pull off in duels. Win or lose, it's, it gives you like a truthful perspective of what can actually happen whilst running a 30 card spellbook deck. So my opponent's running Grit, so it's most likely Sylvan's. This hand is very strong, so I'm going to keep it. You don't have to open up with Grass all the time, because sometimes Grass can actually hurt you. We'll see. So we threw a very, very strong mix of monsters into the grave there. Um, we got a good amount of... We didn't get any destroys to the graveyard, but... Right, we have to make our plays quick now. I guess. Wait, do we have five different ones? Let me quickly check. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we do. So right now, I can activate Full of the Prophecy. Hopefully he doesn't have an Econ. If my opponent has an Econ, he's going to absolutely destroy me. Um, I'll send a secret to the graveyard. I'll bluff him out by setting that so my opponent thinks it is fate. End my turn. Now I can activate Fool's Effect. It goes to the graveyard. I'm going to special summon. Don't go for your Democ because you can special summon your Reaper. And then you can activate all your Reaper's effects. It's going to gain 600 attack. I can add a spell book from my deck to my hand. And then I can special summon a monster also. So, first turn. I, I, look at all these plays. First turn, I've done all this crazy plays. Let me just grab a fate from the graveyard to my hand. First turn, I have a really solid board, except of the bluff spell, obviously. If that was anything else but a grassy screener, if it was any other spell block, obviously, I could have comboed, made some plays from it. But. My opponent's going to set a monster end his turn, and it's game over. It's game over, like, super game over. I could mess around and uh, make sure I had loads of combos, but all I need to do right now... Yeah, activate Fate. He might just leave as well. There we are. Three. Usually you want to pick three that you know that you can get back to your hand with the other spell box, but you can just do this and go in for game. Oh yeah, he does have Grit, doesn't he? So I will summon... Prophecy. I'll grab a power. Just to make sure I've got game because Grit might activate. Now I'll activate Secrets. From this, um, I'm basically fueling my graveyard because I can play this to grab a banished monster, add it to my hand. That puts um, the spellbox to the graveyard and then I can play that spellbox to put another spellbox to the graveyard. So basically, I'm getting all my banished spellbox and putting them back to my graveyard so I can make more plays. But. He, my opponent knew there was no way that he could like get over that. Especially if I managed to grab another fate on my opponent's turn. If he did summon any monster, all I'd be able to do is just banish it instantly and take control of the game fully. It is one of the strongest decks in the game, but I want to execute more combos for you, so let's do a couple more duels. It's kind of a showcase of the deck that I've been using um, recently. I've not been using like off-meta crazy combo decks and stuff like that. I'm going to wait for the new box to try out some brand new crazy decks. For now, I've just been testing spell box, trying to get like pretty semi-professional or like at least 
learn the archetype as best as I can. So I will be climbing with this deck as soon as the ladder resets. So dual standby, that's going to help us dramatically. Grass is greener. A good selection. Um, it says activatable, so obviously the Reaper's there, but we don't want to activate the Reaper. We'll activate the Fool. Fool's effect goes off. Let's see what we don't have in the graveyard or have plenty of in our decks. We need to get a Secrets to the graveyard. Then we can activate Swell Book of Master. Show my opponent this card. Target Secrets. Just so we can search our deck to grab anything that we want. Hmm. Yeah, I'll grab a fate. Let's see. No, I want to view my graveyard real quick. Oh, Demok is in my graveyard. That feels bad, man. So the plays I'm going to make right now. I'll activate this. Selecting... You, you, and you. Allowing me to special summon Destroyer from my hand. Then I can activate this. Wait, I've, I think I've already used the Spellbook of Secrets this turn. Or I don't think I have. Let's just grab it anyway. Yeah, because we activated Fate to play Secrets. So we can play Secrets again. And from this, now I know that all my powerful monsters are in my graveyard. I can grab my Spell Book of Life. Activate my Spell Book of Life. Banishing Blue Boy. I can show my opponent the fate, <laughs> even though he knew what it were anyway. From this, I can bring out Demok. And then I can set down fate, end my turn. And I think Fool's effect is going to activate. Oh no, Chaos is effect activated. So Fool's didn't activate that turn. I think that... I, actually, no, I'll grab Secrets, why not? So, that's first turn. Three monsters, insanely powerful monsters on the field. Plus I have Fate protecting me from whatever my opponent wants to do. I'm fine with that. That allows me to throw a Spellbook to the Graveyard if I wanted to. I will throw the Grasses Greener, I think, into the graveyard. I'll keep Secrets in my hand for now. The good thing about this is my opponent cannot OTK me, or do the play to OTK me for the simple fact. He has to discard the monsters to the field to special summon it to my side of field, and I have three monsters on my side of field, so it's not going to work. He literally cannot summon his big boy monsters. Because he has to throw the monster to the graveyard to get it onto my side of field. He cannot do that. So, let's see what plays he makes instead. Um, that's not Notch Fiend, so I'm okay with that. He is going to activate the effect of his monster. Okay, he's probably going to target Chaos, most likely. What's he actually going to target? Yeah, he does target the Chaos. Chaos gets banished once it gets sent to the graveyard. It doesn't go to the graveyard whatsoever. So right now I'm going to activate Fate to banish his back row. Because his monster gets destroyed because it was normal summon this turn and that's going to be Call of the Haunted. Yep, Call of the Haunted, my opponent cannot make any plays. I can activate Spell Book of Secrets to grab a blue boy. If I've got one left in my deck, I do. And... I have all monsters on the field, meaning my opponent cannot do anything, and Blue Boy searches out a Spore Book of Fate. Actually, from this, I'm going to grab this, so I can grab a... You'll see. I can play this. And now I can grab a Banished Spore Book of Fate, meaning I've got more Spore Books in the graveyard, fueling the Fate if I need to activate it. And my opponent's Rage Quit. So first duel was against Sylvan's Grit, and that's one of the strongest decks in the game right now. He surrendered. Now I'm facing a OTK Dark World. <laughs> An OTK Dark World Archfiend deck. And he surrendered as well. That's why I love 30 card spellbooks so much. 
it's so hard to get over them once the ball gets rolling, and it's pretty difficult to brick with them. Really awesome stuff. Anyway, I'm, what I'm doing with my channel is I'm not going to make the videos 20 minutes long because I know a lot of people don't want to stick around for a 20 minute video. So I've shown off a few wins and gone over the deck. So the question, I hope I actually helped you answer the question if you should go for Spellbox or not. I know the new box is coming but I know a lot of people don't want to pull on it because they're not inter interested in anything with it. And they're holding onto the gems for a deck that they um, might want to go for. So, final like thoughts on the deck is Spellbooks are insanely powerful. One of the highest top tier decks in the game. All you have to do is basically get three blue boys, three um, secrets, and you're set to go. I hope this helped you. If, you did, if it did help you in any way, please leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace!